Okay, so good morning everyone. And uh, after this somewhat long break, uh, we are back to finish uh, our exercise and uh, hopefully our better understanding of uh, how to manage uh, the state uh, in, um, in, uh, in React, especially when we have uh, to deal with user interactions and the forms. Um, okay, so just to, to remember, our setting is that whenever uh, we use some interactive element, some input element, basically, which may be an input or a select for drop-down menus or a text area for longer um, text uh, sentences, uh, or check boxes or radio buttons, which are basically the five types mm -hmm. of input that HTML supports, uh, we will render the input element and make it uh, in the jargon of React uh, fully controlled. So, uh, so all the inputs will be fully controlled and means uh, that the value of the element, of the HTML element, uh, will be uh, bound to um, constant in JavaScript. So basically when we, have, when we are rendering an element uh, value, we set the value attribute and this will force uh, the input element uh, to have that value that cannot be modified. Okay, so React is controlling the value of the component. And the only way for uh, the user to be able to modify what is written inside the input is, uh, uh, of course, to try to type something that would not modify actually the value, but would trigger an on-change uh, event. And so in our code in React, uh, we are capturing the unchanged event uh, and we are handling it uh, to uh, explicitly update uh, the value of the element, uh, the value attribute, the value state, okay, the state, uh, the value of the variable x, uh, so that uh, the input element may, or the, the displayed value of the input element may be updated, may be changed. Okay, so every keystroke the user does will generate a, um, a change event and inside the, the, the event handler for this change that we must set, so we are setting a change, an event handler for the onChange, we have a set state function that will set the new value of the input element. That's why we are calling it fully controlled. We are explicitly setting what value uh, it should have starting the easiest version is starting from the current value of the DOM element. So the, we are here is the only place where we are actually peeking at the real content in the DOM that the user just typed or tried to type. So this is the, the value of the uncontrolled component that we are that would be uh, you know immediately deleted if we don't update X. But then we update X asynchronously this state will be updated and uh, with the update of a state uh, there will be a triggering of the component of the new re-render of the component and this triggering will update the displayed value. Mm -hmm. So this is the pattern that we are uh, always using and this is made possible by the combination of these two attributes. So if you only have a value and you don't set on change the, uh, the, um, the value will be impossible to change, will be constant, will be immutable. And if you only have on change, uh, but you don't have value, then the, you have no control over a React that <coughs> cannot know which value is currently displayed on the input. Remember that in React, information always flows from top to bottom. So this, there is no way within quotes. Actually, there is a way, but we'll try to avoid it. There is no way for a component to understand what is the current status of a component behind it. Okay, so if, if you are in your function component, you are rendering an input, your function cannot know what is the state of the input. That is why we are, instead of reading the state of the input, which is not, pos not possible, we are imposing the state of the input. Okay, so this is what we started to do last, uh, not last week, but it was two weeks ago, with our code here, we had uh, a form for adding a new exam, you remember? 
where we have we set some input elements uh, for the code for the name score and date and so on of the of the of the input element of the exam leading to something similar to this interface something like that we will format it today better so we are four input elements and one button for actually adding the component okay and each of them follow the same pattern so for every input element we have a controlling state for that input element okay so we need to insert the code of the exam okay we have a, a, a state that will remember will know which code has been typed so we create a new state variable and we block the first uh, uh, input element to the value the current value of that state so initially it will be an empty string and then we register the unchanged event then whenever the user types something this something will be used to update set code to update the code variable that in turn will trigger the rendering and will change and update the value so we have four input elements we have four state variables and for each of them we are enforcing the value of the input and we are using the change event uh, to update the state so the advantage what is the advantage is that the state variables will always have at any time the updated and current value of all the input elements we don't need to look at the html we already know because we are controlling them we already know what are the values typed by the user or selected by the type or selected it depends because for example in a date you can you just can pick or select the date okay so we are using this kind of pattern and this handle submit uh, should do something hmm, um, to actually add this information to our list of exams for example right um, okay so this is working actually okay we can type something and we can okay by clicking on add nothing happens because our handler is empty hmm. but we want to make hmm, it happen in some way so first of all we may um, just uh, uh, find the, the where okay where we should uh, um, add the functionality for inserting a new exam and that should be remember that uh, the add exam form uh, is called inside the exam table here at the bottom I, I made a um, with respect to last week I just made a few little modification I just pulled the form out of the table mm? because today we are going to do some transformations and uh, that will also enable me to use the form tag uh, to properly enclose all the input elements related to a single form into the form tag and will we'll be enabled the submit uh, event hmm? we'll, uh, we'll think about that um, okay so wh where where do we where is the state the state information is in uh, up where we have the actual state variable with the exam list okay so in order to add an exam the app component should provide me with a function to add the exam itself remember we already had the remove exam callback and now we can we should define a add exam that receives uh, a full exam object for example uh, sorry equal to a function that uh, receives a full exam object assuming that this exam object will be created by by the form component itself and will uh, add this uh, exam to the current state uh, so we need to modify the state uh, by the only possible way so the, f uh, the first thing you should not do 
Uh, the first error to avoid is just to say, okay, exams.push, exams.push, exam. Okay, this is wrong. This is wrong because uh, we are, okay, exams is an, an array. So we are pushing a new element at the end of it. Uh, what is wrong here is that we are mutating the state without telling React that we are doing that. Okay, so just remember that all the props and all the states should always be immutable. So you can never and you will never change them explicitly or directly. You should always change them through the mechanisms of React. So the only way to change the state is to call the set method for the state itself with the new value that we want this state to take. Uh, and this new value should be a new object altogether should not be a mutated version of the same object. Okay? Because if you are, again, if you are, um, imagine you have an array of, of items, okay? You are calling set state with the, the same array where you change the fourth element. Uh, React doesn't know that you change the fourth element, doesn't go and compare each and every element to check whether any, anything changed. React will see that the, the object, the array is the same, it will just compare the references of the two objects, so, say the object is the same, so the state didn't change. The user called a set state with a new state which is identical to the old one. That is what React will assume. So passing to a set state a modified version of the current state is wrong, because it doesn't allow React to detect the change. What we should do is always to pass a new object. Maybe an, an identical or nearly identical object, but it, it should be a new object. Okay? And uh, uh, so that uh, React will check that the new object reference, so using the, the equal uh, uh, comparison, it does not compare the values. It only compares the references, as in all you know, object-based languages. And we will see a new references, and it will be started triggering all the, uh, all the changes uh, down below. This means that the, the way of uh, setting uh, new exams, in this case it's an, an array, we want to add an element, is to create a new array with the new element at the end. At the end, at the beginning, or in some position. Uh, the easiest way of doing that is using uh, the destruction assignment, for example. So it could be exam, comma, exam. So what we are doing here is to create a new array here, whose elements are many elements taken from the copies of the current element of the exams, array comma plus another one which is here at the end okay so i'm creating a new if if i just make this i'm making a copy of the of the current array a new array with the same items with the same elements inside and then i am adding something we are not finished yet because right now we are setting a new state, exams, whose value depends on the old state. Hmm? You see that in the body of the, of the expression, we are using exams that, would be, that was the old state variable. And so the rule says that in order to avoid overlapping, overlapping of operations or uh, updating according to all values of the state, uh, we should defer, delay the computation of this expression until the very moment in which the state is updated. Okay, so we shouldn't compute this array, say, right now in line 21, 
of our code but we should say okay uh, when you are ready to change the state pick the current value of exams that may have changed in the meantime and then use that for building the new array so the other rule that we are following is always if the new state depends on the old state change it in a callback so the actual set exams would not receive an array but it would receive a callback that would return the array and the callback as, a, as an argument has the old exams and now so we are now creating the new array by combining the old exams plus the newly defined exam so that this set exam you, you see that the body of this expression does not depend on the current state directly it depends on this old exams parameter that will be the future value of the exams hmm? it's similar to what we did with the filter there just remember that for removing exam uh, the good part was that filter was already creating a new array for us filter always returns a new array and so that was fine for with us for adding we are it's the syntax is even simpler hmm? yes So the difference between set exams, uh, yeah. Between these two forms, okay? So uh, the difference is uh, when the value of exams is uh, read, is uh, taken, okay? So, uh, just remember that set exams is not changing immediately the state, but is scheduling a state change. Okay, so if I'm in the first form, I'm scheduling a state change, and the parameter of this function is evaluated right now, in line 21 of my code. Actually, when the user clicks on the button. Okay, so it takes the current value of the exams array and the schedules a state change with this new array that I'm creating now. So I'm creating the array in the moment when I click the button. Then maybe the actual application of the state may be delayed because React has some, something else to do. And maybe in the meantime, we deleted some exam. Okay? In, a, in an application simple as this, uh, there will, there's no danger. But in general, when we have many functions that are modifying the state, uh, you never know with ad, which other state changes are happening. Okay? Uh, and you, since it's a synchronous code, uh, you can't rely on the order of execution. So what would happen is that in the, if in the meantime somebody deleted an exam, when you are actually, when this scheduled state change will be applied it would use the old version of the exam so we are actually uh, forgetting or deleting or ignoring the deletion that we that happened before so we are applying a new state whose value was computed time ago was computed before okay and so from the moment in which we are computing the new state to the moment in which we are actually applying that there may have been other state updates that are not reflected in the new and final value. In the second case, what we are doing is saying, okay, uh, I want to change the state, and uh, whenever you're ready to really apply the state change, call this function that will tell you which value to apply. So we are not computing the, the new value when we are uh, writing set exam. We are just setting aside a method, a function, to compute actually the value when 
the, in the scheduling of React, uh, it decides actually to modify the state. So this computation here will be done not when I'm calling the set, not in, at, at the time where line 24 is executed, but in the future when React decides actually to modify the state. And at that point, it will be done synchronously. And so the, 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 um, the value of the exam here, the value of the state is the latest one. So if, F, if anything happened asynchronously, we already are after that, okay? We are just using the latest value, okay? Uh, this is a, is a difference only when uh, a state variable depends on the old variable state. No? If you are setting a, a constant value or something that only depends on the props of the, of the element uh, or it depends on other state variables, we don't care. But if we are modifying the state according to the current value of the same state, uh, always use the callback. Hmm? And so uh, we avoid surprises for asynchronous updates that, that are you know, forgotten or deleted. Hmm? So the idea is uh, whenever the new state depends on the old state, uh, always use a callback to compute the new value. Hmm? Okay, so this should do the work for us. And the only point is still that we have to pass this uh, method here, this function add exam, down to the component where the button is located. And so we need to push this property down. Uh, we have uh, the add exam is needed inside the exam table. So we add a new property at exam equal to at exam. Okay, so this is the reference to the function that we just created, and this is the name of the property that we are adding on exam table. Exam table is this component here and uh, it needs to pass this property to the exam form add uh, what was the name again sorry add exam equal to props dot add exam so i'm passing a new property to the add exam form by copying the value of the property i just received and finally, in that exam form, which is here, we already have this end of submit function where I added the, I just, just to avoid forgetting it, I already uh, wrote the event prevent default uh, because uh, we want to avoid that the form is really submitted. In HTML, the submission of a form will always reload the new page will go to a page where the form data is being sent to the server and the browser expects a new page, a new HTML page to be received. But if this happens, React dies because we are navigating to a different page. The application will reload. Uh, so uh, always uh, be aware, and uh, you will see it uh, if you keep the inspector open. If you see that the application is reloading, you're doing something, so all the pages reloaded from scratch, uh, you are doing something wrong. That may be using a link, an anchor, a link, uh, href equal to, and you are, so we are actually reloading a page. Maybe it's the same page, but the browser is reloading it. Or submitting a form to the same page, but uh, you will lose the state because the actual, the application will reinitialize. So we always should avoid reloading the application. Oh, it's an error. And so, we ask, uh, uh, unfortunately, the submit event uh, uh, does that, and uh, we should try to, to prevent that. Type equal to, yeah, submit, not, not button. Okay, and in this case, so after we prevent the submission of the form, we can do our work, which is uh, calling the uh, props add the form 
function by providing the, an exam object, so a new exam object, and we already know that the code, the name, the name, oh, so I forget to read the credits, let's write six, for example, the score, and the date. So these one, two, three, four variables are my state variables that are synchronized with the form. Sorry? Yeah, thank you, sorry. Add exam. Props.add exam. Okay, right now we are just trusting the user to write something sensible, so there's no validation here, but this is the place where we should do it. Before calling the add exam function, we should check whether the values of these variables are okay or not. Or we can also do that uh, with the help of the HTML5 validation, but I don't want to make it too complex right now. Just make it working and then we can reason about the validation, the checks, and, some, and everything else. So, Let's see if this is enough. Let's load the application to make it nicer. Okay, a code one to three, the name and the score, and let's pick a date. And if I click on add, sorry, let, um, all, let me always have the console open. If I click on add, okay. There's a problem here. Props.add exam is not a, uh, is not a, a, a property because the props uh, add exam four does not have any prop because I didn't save the file. Sorry, I forgot to save. So if I add now, okay. It's appearing. So if I change another name, whatever, and it appears and so on. And we see that the uh, in the properties inspector here. The add exam form is only receiving this add exam property. And it has four state variables, which are local state. This state is only needed for managing the input elements. It's not real application state. Uh, we call it component local state, a state that is used by the component for itself, basically. The only state of the application is up in the app, okay, where we have the actual list. There are no copies of this state, there are no duplicates. The, only, the one and only state is in the app component. Whenever we need this information about the state, we always copy that as a props. For example, in the exam table, we have a exams, which is available because we need to render the table, but you see which is available as a prop, as a property, as, a, as an argument. Okay, and so as a property, again, it's totally constant. It's immutable. We should very, uh, be very careful uh, with how we, we deal with the uh, oh, there's something wrong here because the average is a number which is not really credible and that is because uh, probably 25 is picked as a string. Let's have a look at the state. Yeah, 25 is as a string instead of a, as an integer. So when I'm creating the new object, I should always remember to uh, why is that in the exam form to convert it as a number? Okay, so let's try to okay. 
okay, now it's a number. Okay, so this is the, the, the basic mechanism. Uh, there are some, some rules, uh, I, I would try to, to summarize the rules. Uh, uh, in any component, okay, we have three types of variables. Uh, props, uh, sorry, like props, state, and local variables. Okay, we can create our local variables. And there are strict rules uh, uh, over which kind of uh, uh, changes you can do, or which kind of data transfers you can do. For example, it's normal uh, to comp uh, sorry, and then we have the the actual render function. I write it in a, in a rain, uh, rainbow color because it's the main function of the application. So at the end, we need we have the render code. The render code may depend on all of this. So in the render, in the return statement, okay, where we are rendered the component, we may use state variables, we may use local variables we may use properties. And all of these are as constants. All of them. It, during the render is just an expression. You cannot change any of this. So when you are writing the render statement, always think that all your variables are constants. They cannot change here. You can query them, you can do conditional expression, you can do Boolean expression, whatever you want, but those are constants for me. Okay, so this is the hard part of, of thinking about React. Thinking that rendering is always a snapshot, a constant snapshot of yours, depending on some other values. And when you're rendering, you don't care about uh, the evolution of these variables. You only care about the current value, okay? Then, what are the changes can you do? What can you? Um, what are the rules for creating local variables? There are no problems. There are no constraints. So you can create just for helping yourself or helping your computation, computing some intermediate value, uh, starting from properties or starting from the state, or starting from other, other local variables. Hmm? You can do whatever you want. The only uh, constraint here is that we are inside the function. So every time the function is called, these local variables will be destroyed and recreated. Okay, so these local variables should uh, remember that we are in a pure function, and so they may have no memory. Okay, so we are taking props, we are taking state, we are computing local variables, and every time we are recomputing, uh, re-rendering a component, those variables will start from scratch. We cannot use this variable, we can use local variables to um, help our computation, but not to remember any, any type of information. Okay? Then, props and state, can we uh, use uh, some props uh, to modify state or vice versa? Well, the answer is no. Hmm? Because inside the function, props and state are immutable. We already know that to change the state, we should not modify the state variable, but call some setting state method, which is outside this picture. They are outside the scope of the function. They are asynchronous and uh, callbacks that will be called. So there are mechanisms for changing the state. But we are not changing it directly. And there are no methods for changing a props. 
because this is a parameter to my function. So the value of the prop I receive uh, is just a constant for all purposes. The only uh, way to change the value of a prop is if my parent component changes the render, the rendering and changes what it's doing with the rendering, the, the kind of prop that they are passing to me. So there is no information flow between props and state uh, with one exception is the initial value of the state. Hmm? Uh, so the, the state, you know, when, you, when we are writing the use state statement, uh, we provide an initial value. And this initial value should be computed starting from something, from constants or properties that are, in a way, in that, con in that context, it could be constant. So the only way, but it's a very, very light way, is the initial value. Which is uh, dangerous, as we will see today. It's, it's, it's possible, we can do that. But uh, just remember that the component, any component in React is, will render many times. A component will render, so the render method here, will be called many times every time a prop changes every time a state changes but the initial value is only applied once the first time the component is rendered okay so we can the name says it all the initial value so it's only used once hmm? and this will create problems for us hmm? in a moment um, and then, of course, the only way to change state is uh, using the set uh, method. So we can, it, we can change it using the set uh, method, but we know it's, they are asynchronous. So we are not changing the state. We are changing the current, we are not changing the current state, we are changing the future state of another invocation of this function on another instance of this function. So the state never changes. If you call a set state in the line below, in the line of code below, the state value is still the old one. We are deciding what will be the next state when the function will be called again in the future. Okay, so it's not a real change here. Okay, so we are really restricted in the kind of uh, um, updates that we do to the state. Of course, we can and we will uh, compute some props uh, starting from the state. Where? In the rendering. Because the render will have uh, some props uh, of the children. Right? So, as the change in the state of a component will change the properties of a child. The only thing we cannot do, we change my own properties. But we will change the properties of children. So we are not rendering just one constant website, immutable website. The website may evolve. The only problem is that the evolution of a children component depends on the state of the parent component. Or the rendering of a component includes some children, and these children will, will receive updated values according to my state, my properties, and maybe some intermediate values that are used for, for computation. Okay, so this is the model we have to live with. The difficult part when you are thinking about uh, complex application is uh, thinking that the rendering is only works, only working on constants. And so we have to. And, uh, okay. There are some, actually, uh, rules uh, about the state, which is the difficult part of this picture. Okay, what can be the state? Uh, there are some rules here that I want to, to, to comment with you. Uh, 
basically they are suggestions or good patterns that not really rules that create a, um, a problem uh, about uh, uh, which variable should constitute a state uh, I last week I saw some of you working on, on the lab uh, they were trying to already work ahead and it's fine they were struggling with uh, with a with the filter for example uh, to understand what should be a state and what should not be a state hmm? um, state is a very um, let's say uh, limited should be dealt with in a very limited way okay um, the idea there are some uh, uh, let me just pick there are some suggestions here what is that? Uh, uh, sorry, I don't remember. Yeah. Uh, in this page of the new documentation, uh, uh, there are some suggestions uh, about uh, which information you should uh, store into state. Hmm? Um, we should always have the minimum amount uh, of state variables from which we can compute everything else. Uh, so for example, this is an error which is uh, uh, frequent, uh, uh, duplicating state information. So for example, when you have the filtered components, the filter, uh, uh, filter li li uh, the application of the filter, you may be tempted to have one state variable contained in the list of filtered elements. So we have the one state variable containing all the movies and another state variable containing all the, only the movies that are matching the current filter. But in this case, you are creating a state variable of one component that depends on another state variable of another component, but even if it were the same component, it doesn't change the and so whenever you have the same information replicated into two states, you are, starting, you are starting a fight against yourself to keep these two states synchronized. Okay, you will have endless problems uh, saying, okay, but if this changes, uh, I should ensure that the other one is changed, and so on. Uh, this solution is much simpler the list of filtered values, of filter movies, it's only a local variable. It doesn't need to be a state because it can be computed from the current state. And what is in the current state? The list of movies, the full list of movies, and the current filter. The current filter should be in the state, which is something which we, not, we will not get right if we think we are thinking of at, uh, about applying a filter. Because we are thinking in a procedural way. Okay, I am clicking there, I need to apply a filter, so I need to compute a value and store it somewhere. No. This is not the React way. The React way is the saying, okay, the user selected an item, and so I will update some information. The information about which filters I need to apply. That's it. And then it's the rendering phase that will render a full list or a partial list according to the filter that has been selected. So applying the filter is not an action that we should do when we click the button, but when we render the component. When we do some actions, we will only call set states and update some state from, let's say, from basic values, from raw values. We should avoid, uh, in many cases, we should avoid the state that depends on props and state that depends on other state. Okay, so that's like a, a smaller version, so on, of the state. So always ask ourselves, uh, which is the minimum amount of state uh, that we need to recreate this user interface. So if we follow that example, for example, I, I don't want to 
to the left for you or with you but uh, the idea is that we have a, you know, for a filtering or a sorting component if we have time maybe we, know, we may add, add sorting to our list of exams so we have one uh, uh, one state variable which is the full list another state variable which are maybe the current filters and maybe another state variable that are the current sort order these are state variables because they are needed we need uh, their value to display the page okay but once we have this information there are constants in our mind and we use these constants to create the page okay then we have all the problem of uh, deciding which components you want to put the state how to put but the, the main problem is, is, is before breaking down into components uh, is which is the state value the application state value okay so maybe the, sec the second and the third state variables are only needed for some part of the application, only the display table. So they are local to a component. And the other is used uh, more widely, so it will be in a upper component. Okay. So when we need the, to create the filter table, for example, or sorted table, in the component that will uh, do that, we, uh, we will just pick the list, apply the filter, apply the sort value onto a local copy of the state. And then this local copy is used for rendering. So all the transformation, we don't need to change the data or to resort the data or to filter the data or to have another copy that it, it can whatever can be recomputed starting from uh, from state uh, should never be stored as a state okay we could write a slogan like computed state is not state if it can be computed is not state so we should try to use our to choose our state variables in order to minimize the amount of state that can be uh, that should be uh, stored and managed. And this will ma make the application much much simpler and much easier. Okay. So when I apply a filter, for example, my idea is not I should change the list. My idea would be just, I should change sorry, this state. And then what happens when this state is changed, it's a problem for the render function. Nor for, not for the, the, the event handler, okay? So we, if, we, we, if we still think too much procedurally, we are putting too much code into the event handlers. Because we already want to compute the result. No. Okay. And trying to anticipate the result would only make things more complex to handle because you, you must explicitly keep in mind all the all the all, um, all the interaction. For example, uh, in in the, in the lab uh, you have to highlight the current filter. So when you, in the component that renders the current filter, how does it know which voice to highlight by querying that state, for example? Otherwise, it would know. If you are just computing a new list of filter elements, uh, the only information that you have is the new elements, and, uh, and which are in a different component and not in the, in the filter list. Mm -hmm. And so you will start adding stuff here and there. Mm -hmm. So let's try to be clean in this, uh, uh, in this decision. Another uh, rule is uh, avoiding contradiction state. And 
and uh, about uh, having too many state variables uh, mm, that maybe they don't make uh, sense together. Uh, uh, there are, there's an example here. Uh, for example, we have uh, they have um, a text area here for for a chat uh, operation or something, and uh, they have different variables for uh, managing the state of this uh, message. Okay, the text uh, is the actual text in the uh, of the text area, so is the value, no problem. And then there are two boolean dual boolean state: is sending or is sent. Okay, so actually this uh, interface may have three different uh, states. Maybe in three different conditions, let's not use the state word. Not sending, sending but not sent, or already sent. Maybe sending takes some time. You see that sending is, in, in this case, is an asynchronous operation to the server. We don't have the server yet, so we cannot. But we, we may imagine that sending may take time, and we want to know when the sending has been completed. And so we have three different conditions. We didn't start sending yet. We are started. We already started the sending, but we are not completed yet, and it's completed. Good. Three values, but we have two booleans. And two booleans give us four combinations and so there may be some combinations of booleans that are not valid one combination will not will not make any sense okay and uh, this will open the door for bugs in our code because in our code maybe we are only checking uh, the is sent variable or is sending variable uh, we know that Logically, the sending state only makes sense if sent is false. Because if sent is true, the sending doesn't give you any information. It's already being sent. But, okay, uh, so we should always check both of variables in every point of our code. But it's easy to, for it's easy to forget, okay? So the, uh, the idea, the better solution would be to uh, avoid having uh, separate Boolean variables to manage uh, the evolution. Basically, this is a state machine. No? Uh, uh, it goes across different states. And the idea is to use a enumeration as a state. Even just a string, OK? So I, I may have three states that are typing Sending or sent, I use two, three different strings as state variables. And so I'm sure they are three. They are clear. And we, I don't have to think about combination of Booleans to understand what, the, what my system is doing. Okay? And so in the code, in the rendering, uh, you see that we are checking whether the status is uh, sending or sent or just typing. And of course, we are using that uh, in the rendering function. If it's already sent, uh, we just uh, short circuit everything and just uh, display a message. Otherwise, we display the form or whatever we need to do. Hmm? So this happens frequently when we are adding functions, adding functionalities. Hmm? Right now, we had only two atomic operations in our form. Was, which is the, was the delete and the add in a way. Everything happened when we clicked the delete button. Everything happened when we clicked the um, with the add form. But now we'll try to make it more complex and uh, and understand uh, what's happening here. Um, okay. So let's make. Uh, let's work on our example mm -hmm. to understand better what is happening here or what the role of these rules. Uh, let me just make a, a very simple, stupid change uh, just for 
aesthetical reasons, nothing more. Uh, on submit, uh, and that's okay. I only using I, I, I only change the, the form by using the bootstrap uh, styles. Okay, so instead of having just uh, input elements, uh, I use the bootstrap code. Just go to the React bootstrap and did some cut, cut and paste for the the appearance of this form. Okay, so what I want to do now is, uh, okay, it's, it's very, uh, it's not nice to see a page like this, because we always have this big form, besides, and make create some errors, because users are typing when we want, uh, we don't want, and so on. So usually, you know, just imagine when you are in a main application, or whatever, you have a list, uh, and you have the option to add to this list, you have one button. So you, the form for adding information is not already opened. You must open it with an extra action. New mail, new message, and so on. New chat. And then it will open you the form for entering the data. So we shouldn't uh, show this form at all times. The idea is it's better, okay, if, if you are in a view mode, of course, uh, uh, nothing is shown. If we are in modify mode, uh, we should have a, by default, only show the add button. And when we click the add button, the form will appear. Okay, wouldn't that be better? And so this is a local information inside the form component. The form component has two states closed and open, right? So we may modify it, add exam form, we have one other state, const, go away, uh, open, set open, Use state. Initially, it will be closed. So that's easy because if the, the form is closed, we only render an add button that will trigger the opening of the form. And when we actually submit the form, we will close it again. So, uh, if not open, we just return uh, maybe uh, div align right and then with the button inside. Let me copy the button from there. Type equal to button. Add. Then let's add the event handler later. And then otherwise, we should return all the form. Let's see. Okay, now we have this add button that doesn't do anything, of course, because we, because we didn't have the event handler. But the form is now closed. If we go to the component and uh, see that we have a state variable, the fifth one, which is currently false, if we change it to true in the inspector, now we are seeing the form. We are setting to false, we are just seeing the button. Okay? It's very similar to the view functionality up there.
if I open the form, uh, okay, and for op for really opening the form, we should uh, uh, say handle the click event here on this button on click. We should set open to true. Always set a callback because in the future we need to call this function set open to true. And we save it. So I just added this on click event and I hope it right. I click on add, it will open the call, the form. It starts empty. I click on add. It will start. It will become open. Of course, uh, then when I add the form, I will close it again. Hmm? So I in the submit function. I before adding the new exam or together with adding the new exam, we should set open to false. So when I finish submitting a form, that will be. Uh, collapse the game. So let's see if it works. Let's reload just to start from st uh, same state, change, add something, code, name, score, and date. No, 32 is too much, 23, and add. Okay, something is wrong. Oh, something is wrong because it's, uh, the application just reloaded. I don't know if you saw that. It was one mistake. If you see the network. If you add something. Okay. Or let's pick a date. You see that the page just flashed. Okay. So there's something wrong here. Is the default uh, uh, submission? Uh, so I so where did the button submit? Add, but I should submit. So the add on submit handle submit here. And the handle submit should call the prevent default. So why? So this one. It's actually submitting the form where it shouldn't. Ah, OK, OK, OK. My fault. I put the on submit on the form group instead of the form element. Probably. I'll tell you in a second. Okay, that did it. And I'm closing that. Okay, that was easy. We just added one state variable. But I'm using this for um, checking whether the state is remembered or not, or in what condition the state is remembered or not. If I click on add again, what do you think it will be the state uh, of this form? Will they be empty or will they remember the previous values. Actually, they remember the previous values. Why? Because this component here, the uh, form, uh, where are you? Add exam form component still has these state variables. 
if I close it, if I show it, uh, uh, if I change the rendering, I'm not changing the state. What's important is the state. As long as the component is alive, the state is remembered. We may like it or not. This is an example of what I was say saying before, that the initial values is only applied once. The first time the, for the form is opened. Initially, these text boxes were empty. But after I fill some data, this data will be stored into the state, and the state is remembered as long as the component is alive. In Jargon, we see the component is mounted on the, on the application. OK? Uh, do you want to clear that? Okay, if you want to clear these values, you must, we must, do that explicitly here. In our handle submit, after submission, we should set uh, code to empty, set name to empty, and set score to zero or whatever. We must reset them explicitly inside our event handler. Otherwise, they will be just remembered. A different uh, behavior if we click the view button here. Clicking the view button makes the exam form disappear from the, from the tree of components. So the component is actually destroyed. And all the state inside the component disappears. So if I click on change again, I will return to a new add exam form component where you see that the state has been reset to the initial values. Because there was a rendering without that component, and so React saw that the component was no longer on the screen, it has been destroyed. And then when this component is again on the screen, it's a different one. And so, uh, you remember, uh, React always makes the difference in the, in the DOM between um, different renderings. So first we see the component is there, and the next rendering is not there anymore. OK, let's destroy it. And then it forgets what it did. At the next stage, at the next operation, you say, the, OK, there is a component at exam form that, that was not there before. So let's create a new component. It doesn't reuse an old one. It doesn't know that. Okay? So if we destroy and recreate a component, and destroying a component just means it's not an explicit action. It means having a rendering where the component is not there. Changing the state so that the next render will not have that component will actually destroy the component. And the next time we need to show it, OK, it will be recreated from scratch from the props and from the initial values. OK. And uh, OK, at this point, uh, we can uh, use it and write it and so on. OK, so there's a difference, a huge difference between not showing or not having a component. A component which is still in the render tree but is not showing anything it still keeps a state. If the component is not in, a, in the render tree, it's destroyed and its state is forgotten. Where do we feel the difference? We feel the difference when only when we are relying on the initial values of a state. Otherwise, we cannot see the difference. Okay? We felt the difference because the first time we opened it, uh, they were empty. The second time, they kept the old values. That's because the initial, you remember this picture here? Uh, we initialize the states uh, not with the props, but with an empty value. So the initial value of the state is not really a pure operation, because it will be different the first time around from the other times around. Hmm? Do, we want, do we need to control that? We need to do that explicitly here. Okay. 
So now we can make it a bit more complex if we want. So, okay, if you want to, uh, to reset it, it's easy. Set code to, again, the initial value. Uh, and then set, code, set uh, name to the initial value. Something I don't like very much because uh, we are having, using the same value in both cases. So I will probably use a constant uh, and then a local variable uh, to something like uh, const default code equal to empty and then initialize the state with default code and also resetting with default code. Hmm. So that they are consistent. I'm sure they are consistent. But it's just a trick for avoiding typing. I, I don't want to type the same constant twice, no? the same literal twice, because of maintenance problems. But they, they still work in the same way. Set score to 0 and set uh, data to empty, for example. So if we do this modification, then the form, every time we open the form, you see, uh, we type a code, we type a name, we type a score, date, add, the form will close, and when we open it, it's still empty. Because we emptied it manually in the handler of the add button. Okay. Okay. So let's think about uh, the. If there are, are there any questions about this? Otherwise, we think about the edit functionality. And we don't want to repeat all the building of the form. So the idea for the edit functionality would be: Why cannot just we reuse the same form? We could reuse the same form when I'm clicking on edit. So let's imagine. So I, I forgot a cancel button here. Sorry. We should have a cancel button to close the form without submitting anything. Hmm? So I will add it in a second. For the moment, uh, I have a, <laughs> the hard way of resetting the state. So if I'm clicking on edit here, I would like to see the form for inserting a new exam appear below, down below here with the data which is already pre-compiled, pre-filled, and that they can change and save. So I should reuse the same form, the same component as much as possible. Right, let's try to make generic, generic components uh, that we can reuse in our application. So how should this component uh, change its behavior? Well, let's see the code. First of all, the, the form should know whether it's being called for inserting a new element or for editing a, an existing one. Why should it know? Well, at least uh, because it should change some messages. For example, if I'm calling for editing, the button should not say add, but it should say save or update, okay? So this component should change its wor the wording of its messages or its buttons according to the modality. Uh, the second point is that uh, maybe some controls should be disabled. Or just imagine, we'll see that in, after the break, but I'm trying to anticipate the problems. If I click on edit for the web application course, does it make sense that it can change all the values here? Or maybe the code should be changed, fixed. Shouldn't be possible to change it. Because if I'm changing everything, I mean, I am really editing that uh, item or I'm creating something different. 
So maybe not all of the fields can be changed. Maybe edit will only change the score and the date, or maybe also the name, but not the code and so on. So the form component in add functionality should ask for all the data. In uh, edit functionality should only ask for a subset of the data. That's fine. So it should know in a way. This means that this component should receive another property uh, telling it uh, how to behave. Are we in edit mode or in add mode? So that in the code we could have some set of checks if mod is equal to add, if mod is equal to edit, and we do different things. And also here, uh, when we are actually modifying the, the list of exams, uh, we are calling an add exam method that should not be add exam, should be maybe modify exam. Okay, so it should have some little differences here and there. But the say, main behavior, like would be the validation of the data, the handling of the events, and so on, would be the same. The layout of the form would be the same. So it makes sense to reuse the same form with a, a difference on the initial values. The real difference would be that the new form, we don't want it to open empty. We want to open it uh, with a copy of the current row, of the values of the current row, right? And this can be done by changing the initial values. So in add mode, the initial values would be empty. In edit mode, the initial values should take a copy of the current exam, of the exam of the current line. Okay, and this can be a problem, will be a problem, uh, because uh, um, the component that calls uh, the exam form should pass these ad additional properties, but this, at this level here of the table component, we don't know which row has been clicked. So we need to pass some information around because the only point where we know which row is being selected is on the edit button, which is two levels below. <laughs> and we need to pass the information to a component which is above. Okay, this is something to think about, okay? The idea is, for the next uh, step of our exercise, uh, modify the add form in order to support the edit functionality. Editing means having another property with the um, mod, add versus edit, and uh, some properties for the current values that will be used to initialize the form. Okay, and then we, sh we should call it a slightly different function, but that's easy. We should think about how to reorganize all of our state and our properties propagation in order to support this. And then the other problem will be uh, the, the survival of the state of this form, like we did before. Should we reset it or not? Uh, let's see. Hmm? Okay, so before that, uh, so while, while you are taking your coffee during the break, uh, you can make, start thinking about this problem. Uh, and trying, of course, to reuse as much as possible the current component, okay? Otherwise, you should do something completely different, but this is not the goal, okay? So we see in 15 minutes from now and try to solve this problem.